Hi everyone, um, it's Catherine Michelle, and uh, tonight we are going to do um, item number 57. Um, I know we've gone over this several times, but we're going to actually do this as a, as a presentation like every other piece of information we've been bringing to you. So um, let's just jump right into this. Um, I find where I can share my screen. At least I hope I can find where I can share my screen. I know I always have problems with you think I would have this figured out by now, right? <laughs> no such luck. So let's see. Here we go. Item number 57. Okay. So this is the one, as you know, this is... Um, where the hole was found in the ceiling a month later. And here is when they came in. Uh, this was in uh, February 18th, I believe. The bodies were found January 17th. And what I've done here is I've added an arrow to show you the direction that this was going. It was heading like right, see this corner of the wall over here? It's, it's heading in this direction. Oops. Um, <laughs> I clicked the wrong one, like what else is new, right? <laughs> so it's heading this way, and here's the light, and over here is the front door. So when they walked in, they, they like they said it, they said it was obvious hole in the ceiling, obvious defect. So when they walked in in February, they saw it, no problem, but in January they did not. But anyway, it's important to notice the direction that it's going. And on this one, um, this is from page 19 of the BCA lab results. It says, cotton batting, additional pages apparently torn from the book, pieces of fabric, and other items were scattered on the area rug within the living room. A hole was observed in the living room ceiling near the front entry. Characteristics of the hole and its surrounding area indicate that a projectile was traveling generally west to east as it entered the ceiling and exited in the attic. A bullet, item number 57, was collected from the attic in the vicinity of the hole. Now on here, um, I want to make sure that I, this is sharing with, with you guys as well. So um, I'm going to pause sc uh, screen sharing because I really want to make sure that um, um, that everything is going to be shared. So we want all of this. There we go. Okay. And on this one, which page? So that's this right here, this report right here. And the reason why I'm showing you guys this is because oftentimes, as you know, People have said that the screenshots we take and put in the slides, that we've made stuff up. This is the actual report. Um, let's go here to the very beginning of this report. And it's um, this one right here, lab report number two, results um, a field examination. And we're going to just keep going down here. And it's page number 19. And this is just what we read you. Okay. And um, the next slide shows us that, um, again, I need to make sure that it's, it's showing. Okay, it should be showing this right here. Um, I swear sometimes I just swear. Okay, this is where we were. Now this next page, these are the handwritten notes of Joe Cooksley. And this is page 95 of the 488 page. That's the really big file that, that um, was given. 
And you see here where he says a hole was observed, he gives the, um, uh, the direction, the entrance, general, west to east. They didn't do any testing. And then this one here is they weren't doing any testing around the whole entrance, which I'm kind of surprised they didn't do. And their reference point was the southwest corner. And then um, he's describing what they saw in an elliptical east to west, slightly southwest, south, southeast, southwest axis, looking straight up, um, chip in the ceiling, thinner on the edge, insulation observed, hole in the attic, and then inside the attic were no, no defects other than the nail holes. Um, and then here, he's describing what they saw in item 57. White powder material and mushroomed end, apparent rifling on butt end. That was all that was seen. Okay, and this one is the diagram of the living room. This is page uh, 120 of the data request file. And here's something that I, I really want to, to go over. Oh, we'll come back to some of these. Here we go. I've outlined this in, a, in another paper. Um, not sure which one it was, but let me draw you guys a line here. Let's use this one. We'll make it a little bit thicker. Okay, so item here's the doorway, right? Here's the well, the closet and stuff. So we know the doorway was like right around here. The hole was um, somewhere like right around here. I don't. I'm trying to look at the number. I don't. Not sure what that what that says, but. So it was the, the shot was going this direction. It was heading this way. This is the way the bullet was going. Now here's David's body. Here's his, where his head would have been or what was left of his head. Now the exit wound on David was on the left side. The trajectories of someone was going something like this. The exit wound is over here. And we see this bullet is traveling this way. Do you see now why we say there's no way? I mean, other than the fact that there's nothing on that bullet um, that indicates it actually went through David's head. But the bullet would have, and here's the window over here, the bullet should have been somewhere in this area, but it is not. We know that item 57 was shot going from this direction. So we have, when you pull that back, it was shot somewhere over from here. And they didn't do to find, um, they didn't find out what angle it was, but the way it was in the ceiling, it didn't, it wasn't directly up. It looked like it really came at kind of, of, of an angle. So my best guess is that it was shot somewhere over here. But we know David was here and, and the bullet went this way. You see how they don't match up. They just don't match up. I don't care what anybody says or how they try to figure it out. It doesn't match. And again, this is um, showing the direction of the bullet. This was after Joe Cooksley had come in here and he poked his finger in here and made the hole a little bit bigger. This was not what it looked like when they first walked in. And that's in the notes. I'm not, you know, that that's in the notes. Again, here's the, um, this tells you the, the, um, Photo number you can find, 1683, and again, showing you the general direction of the bullet. You can see here, um, let, me, let me get out of this one and zoom in closer for you to see this. Pull this over here a little bit more. You see right here where it entered. Right here, you see where it skims and it entered, and then it chips as it goes in into the ceiling. So, and right here, these dark areas. Let me let me move this arrow out of the way real quick. But um, let's see if I can get this. 
but that you see these like little scrapes right here that is where the bullet came into contact with the ceiling and you don't see blood hair or anything what you see is what you would expect to see this is more than likely the um oh like the gunpowder residue that came off of the bullet and hit here okay oh sorry i went to the wrong slide And again, so, oh, that's okay. That's where we were. And same thing. Now you're just seeing the direction. And again, this is where he had poked, gone in and poked and made the hole bigger. Why he did that, I have no idea. So when I'm reading his notes and he's saying he's putting his finger in there, I'm like, why would you do that? Again, just showing you direction, showing you that you see the um, gunpowder residue this slight indentation as the bullet is hitting up toward the ceiling. And that's why I think it was almost shot with somebody like maybe with their arm in the air. Don't know. It's, it's just a guess. Um, and then here we have page 17 of the BCA lab results. And this is just talking about um, the condition of David's body. And here it says that um, a hole was observed in the remaining portion of David's skull. And um, I'm just going to go here and show you that in the reports. Oops. Oh, I think I just. <laughs> ah, brother. Yeah. So again, just showing you still same report number two right here. A hole was observed in David's skull. And then this one. Um, gives you the position of David's body as he was lying there. David Timothy Crowley was lying on his back with his arms spread to the sides. His right hand was missing and only the back portion of his skull remained attached to his spine. He was wearing a white long sleeve t-shirt with a gray short sleeve t-shirt over it, a navy blue undershirt, exposed light blue underwear, navy blue athletic pants, and rope slash bracelets on his left wrist. His bare left foot was covered by a blue blanket, and his right bare foot was partially exposed. A rip was observed in the left thigh of his pants, and a portion of Kamel Razul Crowley's sweater was draped over his lower right leg. His right sleeve was pushed up, and a tattoo was visible on his right forearm, which is interesting. That's the hand that's missing, and that's the hand that the sleeve was pulled up on. Does it say that happened on his um on his left his left arm? His right hand was missing and only the back portion. So no. So it was pulled down on his left, but pulled up on his right and he's missing his right hand. I find that interesting. See, we learn something every time. Um Every time I do this, I, I, I find something else because that should have been another clue. Why are they saying the dog did that? Clearly his arm, his, his, his sleeve was pulled up, pushed up, and his hand is missing. So why are they thinking the dog did it? That should have told them someone else was there. The same thing. This is page number 17 of the 40 page report. We'll continue. And here's the autopsy report. And this here, what this does is it describes um, the, the trajectory. This is um, the gunshot wound to the head. The entrance is indeterminate because the right side of his head, wherever that took place, that part of his head was missing. The exit we know is the left parietal with in, um, external beveling, that's how they know that was the exit wound. And here is um, some pictures of the bones of the head. Here we have the frontal, here we have the parietal, the sphenoid, the ethmoid, which is down you know, in, into the, 
the eye sockets, the temporal, and the occipital. Now, according to the, um, we'll go here. This is a little bit better. Frontal, sphenoid, uh, nasal, lacrimal. Um, here we go, the maxilla, the mandible, the zygomatic. Here would be the zygomatic arch. And this is uh, the temporal mandibular joint here. Just a lot of people, when you have TMJ, it's this area right in here. The temporal bone, the parietal bone, the occipital bone, and here is the ear canal. Now, according to the um, the autopsy report, as they and then they talk about where the entrance wound, and since it was parietal, it exited somewhere over here. It it, it describes and when it measures it out, it's somewhere like around in this area. Here would be the exit wound. Now, this parietal bone covers both sides. It's 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 the largest. Um, bone on the head right here. So you have this parietal on this side, then you have the parietal on the other. So the exit wound was somewhere right about over here, and the ear would have been right here. There's the ear canal, and you know your ear comes up a little bit more above that. So it would have been like right about here. And um, here we go. This is what I want to um, go back again. Um, we went through this just a second ago. And um, again, the direction of the bullet is going this way. David was lying with his feet here. And now you have to keep in mind, Kamel's, all of this area actually, it was covered with the blanket as well. This was partially covered, his left covered with a blanket. This was exposed. Um, again, the trajectory is this way because the exit is on the left parietal. It's going this way, the window is here, but this bullet, this trajectory, took a path. Oops, sorry. Don't, I don't go very straight. But somewhere like around here. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to go, ah, uh, that is not the same bullet that went this way through his head. And I don't care how you twist it, how you turn it. There's just no way that that could be that. Not only the simple fact that it's missing pertinent DNA, uh, like blood, hair, tissue. And um, here's the CAD drawing of the living room. I I'm going to go down here, go out of the... Um, because I want to get a closer look. I'm going to zoom in here for you. And this is another um, where I can show you the direction of the bullet is going this way because we know um, the, the direction in which it was going this way. And here would be this X right here is um, roughly the mid portion of where David's body would have been. So just say that's about the chest area. His arms are this way. His head would have been here. The exit wound here, same thing. It's going this way. And yet this bullet is traveling this direction, not the same bullet. And I really hope this, um, it, this gives a better visual to help people understand, you know, the directions. The directions do not add up this way does not equal this way. And um, this is the tree. And it, the, the hole would have been right up here somewhere, and then the front door over here. And this will let you know, look right here, you can tell that nothing hit that window. We see no high velocity blood spatter. There was no bullet found over there that um, that contained. Well, we know no bullet was ever found that contained the uh, David's DNA in the, in the in the way of hair, blood, tissue. Um, clean window, clean bookcase. And again, here's the directionality. It's going this way, and David was this way. It's going this way. David was this way. 
Um, and now there's something else I would really like to um, to share with you. Uh, let me go back to the VCA report. Okay, so that should still be there. Now I pull this up. going through all of these notes here where where is it okay that's where okay that's where we were It's so funny because I had this all set up here to find that, and now <laughs> it's not here. Um, this can be a little bit frustrating after a while. I do believe that. Let's do, what page was this one? Let's do... So maybe it was four twenty. Ah, okay. And again we see on item four twenty, no blood stain. We've done that before. And let's continue moving upward in this report. Okay. I'm gonna pause here because it's ridiculous I had it. Now it's not here, but I'm going to pause the recording and then I'm going to come back with the page that I need. So I'll be right back. Okay, I finally found it. And again, same old, same old. It's like right in front of my face. Here are the last two things I want to share with you guys. And it looks like, uh, yeah, looks like it's there. Okay, and we're going to go with wording here. And this should settle it. Again, we've, we've settled this once and for all before, but here we go. On here, we see the, the writing, and this is um, being written. I'm not sure who wrote this one. I'd have to look at it again, but these are the handwritten notes. And this is what they say about item number 1B, which was the magazine and then gun, the gun. But here they're talking about the magazine. They removed two cartridges. Two cartridges removed from the magazine, sub-itemized as items 1B1 and 1B2, Winchester 40S&W, swabbed each with one sterile swab. They, they cataloged them as items 1B1-1 and 1B2-1, both phenonegative. So there was no blood on those. Now we're going to see how they wrote it in the report. This is um, page 10 of the 40 page report of this report, which is the nuclear DNA report. And this is from the 40 page report. And it states blood was not detected on items 1B1 and 1B2. They took it, they swabbed it both phenonegative, no blood. Blood was not detected. Now, let's look at item 57. How is that worded? No blood, no blood stain. They swabbed it. They cataloged it as item 57-1. How does the report read? Blood was not detected on item 57, but a sample was taken. Here's the sample they're talking about. No blood on 57. They had the bullets from the cartridge. I mean, from the magazine, I'm sorry. They had the cartridges from the magazine. They swabbed them. No blood. Blood was not detected on these items. However, a sample was collected. No blood on 57. Blood was not detected on 57. However, a sample was collected. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. There you have it. And hopefully we don't have to come back and revisit this anymore. Um, I really think that um, 
this really should solidify any doubt that people have in their minds. Um, there was no blood on item 57. It was not the bullet that killed David, as you saw in the drawings. Um, the, the direction of the bullet was going one way, and the bullet that went through David's head was going another way. You know? <laughs> How do we do this? <laughs> you know, there the two show me. They, they, they're not the same. So um, there is one report I read somewhere, and I am still trying to find that. If I find that again, um, I read it once, I, I highlighted it, and then after I moved, I just have not been able to find it. Now, if I find that, I will come back and revisit item 57 because that um, – it would be something everybody would want to see, so I'm not going to say what it is because unless I have it, I'm not going to bring it up. However, I hope, you know, hope you guys saw. Um, and for those who aren't, you can't um, see the visual because you're listening, the um, bullets were traveling in completely different directions. The one in the ceiling was going, what did they say? Um, east to west or west to east from um, mom was maybe it's going west to east yeah i think it was going from a west to easterly direction and from david it would have had to have been going north to south polar opposites not the same so there we have it it's in the reports and you see in the reports how they wrote for the um the cartridges that were found in the magazine they swabbed them no blood was detected, but they took a sample, 57, no blood was detected, but they took a sample. And from, you know, each of those, they were able to garner whatever um, DNA they were looking for. I have nothing else to say, so hopefully, hopefully you guys have a great night.